welcome to this Easy Electrophysiology video tutorial. In this video, we'll cover the options for analyzing event kinetics. To get started, we can click on Analyze Events and run an events analysis. And I'll just change the plot settings to make the results easier to see now that we're zoomed in. So we can see on the plot the event kinetics, including the baseline, rise time, half width, peak, decay percent and decay fit. We can look at the baseline first, which is shown on the plot as a blue circle. The baseline is detected by searching a period prior to the event peak, and we can set this period using the search period in milliseconds options. The baseline can be detected using an automated algorithm or a user set baseline. Please see our event detection video. If you have a recording with lots of high frequency events, then you may want to reduce this option to say one or two milliseconds to avoid erroneously detecting the baseline in the decay of a previous event. The next option is the average baseline option. Here we can select a period of data prior to the event in milliseconds to average. If we turn it off, the unaveraged baseline is used. Similar to the baseline search period, if there are a lot of high frequency events in your data, you may want to reduce this so you don't average the decay of a previous event into your baseline. In general, it's suggested to average the baseline as it results in a more accurate estimation. Next, we have the event rise time. This is calculated as the time between the two green dots plotted on the event rise. By going to Options, and then events, we can adjust the rise time parameters. By default, these are set to the 1090 rise time, but we can choose any values we like. For example, we can set the 2080 rise time, and you can see on the graph the position of the green dots is changed to reflect this. We can set this to anything, let's just say the 4060 rise time, and again the plot is updated. A useful option for improving the accuracy of rise time, half width and decay measurements is the interpolate to 200 kHz setting, particularly in recordings with lower sampling rates. This option will upsample the event prior to the analysis of these kinetics and can really help to improve measurement accuracy. The next parameter we can look at is the half width, also called the full width at half maximum. This is calculated as the time between the two yellow dots shown on the plot. There are no specific options for this parameter, although as mentioned, interpolate to 200 kHz can increase the measurement accuracy. Next, we have the event peak. This is shown on the plot as a red dot. During event detection, we can exclude events based on the event amplitude, which is calculated as the difference between the event peak and the baseline. By changing amplitude threshold, we can exclude events under a certain amplitude, here set to 10 picoamps. But for example, if we set this to a very large amplitude threshold, like 300 picoamps, this event will be excluded from the analysis. Often the peak will be calculated on a spike in the noise, as shown here, and a better representation of the true event peak can be obtained by averaging a small period around the peak using the average peak in millisecond setting. Next, we have the decay percent parameter, shown on the plot as a purple cross. This represents the time taken for the event to decay to a certain percentage of its amplitude. And this is calculated as the time between the purple cross shown on the plot and the event peak. By default, this is set to 37% of the event amplitude to match exponential decay. However, we can choose any decay percent value we like by going to Options, Events and changing the decay percent field. We can change this to say 90%. This will be the time between peak and decay at 90% of the event amplitude. And you can see on the plot the purple cross has moved closer to the peak. Alternatively, we could change it to say the time taken for the event to decay to 20% of its amplitude. Finally, we have the decay endpoint, also referred to as the event endpoint. 
This is the point in which the event is considered to have finished. We can adjust the period to search for the decay endpoint by changing the decay search period option. By default, the entire search region is taken as the event. So for example, if we increase this from 60 to 120 milliseconds and reanalyze, we can see the new event endpoint indicated on the plot with the purple dot is 120 milliseconds from the event peak. However, if another event occurs before this time point, the event endpoint is set to one sample prior to the baseline of the next event. Alternatively, we can set a different approach, that is to search the decay search period for the first sample at which the data crosses the baseline. If no point crosses the baseline, the closest point within the case decay search region to the baseline is taken. Easy electrophysiology supports fitting a monoexponential function to the decay, a bi-exponential to the entire event, or not fitting the event at all. If you don't want to fit the events, choosing don't fit events will decrease analysis time, as typically fitting the event is the most time intensive part of the analysis. We can also fit a bi-exponential function to the entire event by selecting bi-exponential and reanalyzing the events. The bi-exponential fitting is very sensitive to the position of the first data point in the event. And so the option is provided to adjust the start point of the fit in a brute force manner, taking the fit with the highest R squared. By default, this is set to free samples. This means that the first bi-exponential will be fit starting at the baseline, the next starting at baseline plus one samples, then plus two, then plus three, and the best of these three fits taken. Note that using this option will increase the time taken to run the analysis. And alternatively, we can exclude any event with an R squared under the specified cutoff value with the exclude fit with R squared option. Another set of options we can use to help improve the fit are based on bounding the coefficients of the function. So we can adjust and improve the fit again, but this time adjust until the coefficients of the fit function lie within certain bounds. So here, for example, we can set the bounds very low and run the analysis. And we can see that this event is now excluded because none of the fits with adjusted start times had coefficients within the set boundaries. Alternatively, we can simply exclude any events in which the fit function has coefficients that lie outside of the specified boundaries. Similar options for the monoexponential fit to the decay are available. In this case, the start point of the fit is adjusted to both before and after the start point, i.e. the event peak. It's also possible to manually edit the position of the event baseline and decay endpoint. So for example, if you wanted to change the position of the automatically detected kinetic, you can click edit kinetics and simply click on the kinetic you want to change and then click on the data point you want to move it to. We also have the option to calculate the maximum rise and decay on all detected events. This is not enabled by default as it can slow down the analysis, particularly if the slope is calculated over a large number of data points. As an example here, we can choose to calculate the maximum rise and decay by clicking calculate max rise slash decay slope and choosing the number of samples to calculate the slope across. The max rise slash decay is measured by iteratively calculating regressions across the rise and decay and taking the maximum of the generated slopes. Each regression is calculated over the number of samples specified in the input boxes. If the number of samples specified exceeds the number of samples in the rise or decay, that max slope parameter will not be calculated for the event. For now, I'll choose four samples for the rise and 10 for the decay. In general though, the number of samples to choose will depend on the size of your events and the sampling rate. It makes sense for calculating the max event slopes 
to always use the baseline crossing method to detect the end of the event rather than the entire search region because if the entire search region extends to the period after the decay, we may end up detecting a maximum slope in the noise. And we want to try and restrict the calculation as best as possible to the steeply falling phase of the decay. So I'll leave the default option checked. So we can just run this analysis. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer to analyze the data when the max slope is calculated. You can see the maximum slope shown on the graph, the rise in orange and the decay in pink. Finally, there's the option to smooth the decay and rise before calculation. This will have the effect of reducing the noise in the data prior to calculating the regressions. After event kinetics analysis, the results are shown on the table in the table tab. We can save this to Excel or CSV or copy directly from the table. It's also possible in events analysis to save the analysis as is and come back to it later. This is particularly useful if you have a large data set in which you need to check many events. We can do this by going to save data in events analysis mode and choosing the save events analysis or load events analysis to save or load the analysis respectively. The analysis will be saved as a JSON file ready to be reloaded into the software at a later time. It's also possible to calculate kinetics on an average event once analysis has been run. To do this, click average all events we can select the method used to align the events prior to averaging by changing the alignment method box and we can also increase the window size by adjusting the window size input box. To analyse the kinetics on the average event, just click find peak and calculate event kinetics and then we can move the region that pops up over the event peak and click calculate kinetics. This will use all of the options already set in the main window. And we can look at these results by clicking display results table. At the moment, the baseline detection method used is auto, but we can also select use baseline from the drop down menu to use a linear cutoff. Doing this, we can select the baseline manually is the first point that crosses the red line shown between the measure baseline region. Finally, we can fit a bi-exponential function to the average event. That will start and end at the two endpoints of the selection region. The event kinetics will then be calculated on this by exponential fit. Thank you for watching this Easy Electrophysiology video tutorial. I hope you have a great day.